Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of the Wrestling Huddle. I'm Review Sports Editor Mike Brown, joined with our wrestling guru, Bob Steer. Bob, we're coming off the holidays where the wrestling schedule was a little bit uh, disjointed, to say the least, but we had a couple teams, Alliance and West Branch, uh, were in tournaments and, and some big things in particular for individual aviators, no tournaments over the weekend. Yeah, yeah, it is that time of year where uh, the leagues take a break for a couple mm -hmm. weeks. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I guess we'll start with West Branch uh, was mm -hmm. first, actually. They went down before Christmas, yeah. uh, down to Dayton, and did really well. Out of 54 teams, they finished fifth. Yeah. And they had four individual placers. And, again, you know, there's a large brackets with 54 right. teams. So those guys got a lot of matches in. Um, uh, Ian Sharp, uh, Travis Pigeon, Alex Schopfer, and Mason Hughes all placed yeah. in the top eight. And they had several others that won quite a few matches. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that was a real good tournament for West Branch. Yeah. And when you think the name Sharp and, and West Branch Wrestling, and, you know, here's another one. Uh, I mean, one. they just they just keep cranking <laughs> they, them out at West Branch. I'll tell you, do. those great heavyweights. Then it's funny to hear even some of the the national guys. Yeah. Uh, one of the guys made a joke. Surprise, surprise! Another sharp at West Branch. Yeah, that's uh, right. So yeah, they do just they seem to keep coming every yep. year. Yep. And then of course the Alliance Aviators. You know, they made their annual trip down to the Wheeling Park Duels. Mm -hmm. Did very well, and and obviously had a, had a big highlight, individual highlight amongst that. Yes, they did. I talked to Coach Shaw, and he, he was real happy with, with how they performed. They went 5-3, and three and there was a couple matches I think he felt like they could have won. Mm -hmm. Some of their younger guys, you know, wrestling eight matches, may yeah. have run out of gas here or there. Um, you know, it was, it was a new experience for some of those guys, but it's a great experience. It's sure. an experience they're going to need for down the road come tournament time. So mm -hmm. um, so I think he was real happy with, with just the way things played out. Um, and, yeah, you're, you're right that there was one huge individual accomplishment. Uh, Spencer Nagy uh, picked up his 100th win. He yeah. actually did it the first day of the first match. He had yeah. 99 wins going into the tournament. Yeah. Um, so he picked it up the first day, uh, ended the tournament with 106. He was 7-1 and one, uh, for the tournament. And, you know, it's interesting. There's only been four other aviators yeah. uh, that have cracked that century mark. You have to go back Joe Montgomery, uh, Marcus Adelman, uh, Matt Walker, and uh, Manny Centron yeah. uh, were the four, which is kind of surprising. But, but then you also have to realize that, you know, 20, 30 years ago, guys weren't wrestling 40 matches That's a year. Right. A couple of West Branch's early state champions, I know, didn't even crack 20 wins, I don't think. Right. I think one of the Manning brothers may have had 18 or 19 wins mm -hmm. when he won the state title. So yeah. um, it's well, it's just in the last 20 years or so, um, teams have been, you know, wrestling more matches. And, you know, the 100, I'm not saying it's easy at all. It's very rare. Right. Um, but that's why you don't see some of the guys, uh, some of the older wrestlers, um, you know, at that 100-win mark. Right. But an amazing accomplishment still uh, for anyone. Like I say, only the fifth one in Alliance history. And right. a huge congratulations to Spencer, um, you know, from us. And uh, best wishes the rest of the year. Absolutely. And when you think about those those names you just listed off at Alliance, my goodness, those are tremendous wrestling names. And Alliance had a lot before that as well. Mm -hmm. But when you think of those those last few that uh, you talked about, my goodness, those are tremendous wrestlers. It's an exclusive club. Yeah, it really is. It really is. Well, you know, the holidays are over. We get back into the NBC grind this week. Yep. Uh, starting Thursday night, we've got some some key matches. Uh, you know, teams that have different goals, you know, they've got to get these, these kind of matches. Matches that... A lot of our area schools are probably favored in, not all of them this week, but uh, let, let's start with uh, Marlington's going to Canton South. I mean, uh, how, how do you see that one, Bob? Oh, I think Marlington should, it's a match Marlington should win and mm -hmm. probably win handily. Yeah. Um, you know, Canton South has a couple good individuals, I'm trying to think who they would match up with, sure. but uh, down at 113, they have a good one, Dolph. Mm -hmm. um, Ness in there at 45, I think. Um, and then they've got uh, oh, a young man that was out for the West Branch match that I covered, but uh, okay. I think around 182 is, okay. a, is a really good wrestler. So there'll, there'll be some, you know, in spots, some good challenges for Marlington. But I think all in all, the Dukes should, right. uh, you know, should should come away with a pretty easy victory there. Sure. And then and then when you look locally this week, you know, the West Branch Warriors go on the road to Louisville. Now, West Branch traditionally has had good success against Louisville, but Louisville's got a new head coach this year, and things are starting to look up for the Leopards. So, you know, uh, I would think West Branch would be the favorite there, but they're going on the road to Louisville. And... Yeah, I mean, I agree. You know, definitely West Branch would be a pretty heavy favorite mm -hmm. going into this match. Yep. Uh, Louisville is, you know, turning it around. You, yep. can, you can see they're turning it around. I think uh, I think Laughlin's going to do a good job there. Yes. And, uh, um you know they're they're going to be a team to watch in future years, but it takes a while to rebuild a program that's yeah. been down like yeah. that. Yeah. And I think it's going to take you know it's going to take a few years for them to start building that winning tradition there mm -hmm. in wrestling, like they have in every other sport. Right. Well, the, the <laughs> thing is, and going back to that, you mm -hmm. know, dovetailed that idea. They have so many numbers at Louisville. You know, if they th get things going the right way, and I think they will now. 
uh, they could have a, a lot of success down the road because they've got they win by attrition in a lot of sports, and they've certainly got the numbers in wrestling. I agree. I mean, it, it's just a fact that they their school is almost twice as big sure. as, as the rest of the NBC schools, mm-hmm. and uh, it gives you more kids to work with. And, right. uh, and part of the problem is they've lost some of those good youth wrestlers and middle school wrestlers because they've specialized in football. Yeah. I know Schrock was a real good wrestler and mm-hmm. some other names yeah. that uh, – you know, you bring in a coach like Laughlin that maybe can keep some of those guys right. and make them dual sport guys instead of just focusing on football. All right. of a sudden, yeah. yeah, you start getting those good athletes to also wrestle. Right. Um, and, and I, you know, Laughlin could be that guy. We'll have to see. You know, yeah, we'll see right. how it plays out. But uh, certainly, yeah. the potential is there. You know, down the road a couple of years from now for right. Louisville to. Uh, I know you were talking about Louisville's youth program. You got a chance to see them up close and personal last week, and, and they were very impressive. They've been coming to the West Branch yeah. tournament for eight years now, yeah. and just about every year they've been in the bottom few. Mm-hmm. Uh, they steamrolled everyone this year. Yeah. I mean, they didn't have a match within 30 points, so, right. and that included North Canton and Lake and, you know, some quality programs. Yeah. So, yeah, there's they've got talent coming up. Sure, sure. And then, of course, the last area match this week will be in alliance as the Aviators host the Carrollton Warriors. Now, there's a lot of people out there that feel Carrollton is the team to beat. Now, again, there's going to be some great matches in the month of January, matches that come down to one individual match could determine the entire team match. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the Aviators will have Carrollton Thursday night uh, in the Aviators hangar. Let's talk about that one a little bit. Well, I think that's uh, the NBC match of the week. Um, I think it's it's the match that everyone's gonna gonna be keeping an eye on to see just how it plays out. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, hopefully Alliance is in full strength. They haven't had Christian Jackson right. all this year. Um, Parker Utley, I can't remember if it was a scrimmage or the first match, but they've missed him. You know, a, a good freshman that mm-hmm. um, was expected to be a contributor. So um, hard. We don't know yet if they're gonna be in full strength, yeah. but it'd be nice, to, you know, if they were to right. see how it plays out. But even so. Um, there's going to be a lot of individual matchups to watch. Um, you're correct on paper. Carrollton right now, I think, is a team to beat. In fact, uh, Carrollton was down at the Wheeling Park Duels mm-hmm. also uh, mm-hmm. that Alliance was at. And I talked to Coach Shaw. He got to watch them a couple times. Yeah. And his uh, reaction was, yeah, they're, they're good. Yeah, right. <laughs> they're good. They're, you know, one through 14, every weight class, they have a, they, they're sending out a quality kid. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, and that's where I, I think Alliance, at least right now with a couple of their stars out, you know, they may have a couple holes that right. may make it a little hard to overcome. But uh, yeah. but having said that, yeah, there's going to be some interesting matchups, and I think a lot of eyes are going to be checking that box score to see how it plays right. out. Right. I think this is a great measuring stick for mm-hmm. Alliance as a program that's really on the rise to see <laughs> where they're at in their progression. Right. Yep, definitely. Yeah, it should be exciting. Well, we're looking forward to it, and I think that'll wrap it up for this week. For Bob Steer, this is Mike Brown. We'll see you on the mat.